Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an upcoming single board computer from Pine64 known as the Quartz 64 Model A. And one of the big reasons I wanted to pick this up and take a look at it is because it's powered by the new Rockchip RK3566 at 2 GHz, and this one here has 8 GB of LPDDR4 RAM right out of the box. Now these are available for purchase on Pine64's website, but uh, in the description they state you really shouldn't purchase it unless you're a developer because right now there's not a lot of software available for it. But I've been doing a lot of testing with their Android builds that they've been posting on their wiki and it's actually performing really, really well. So we can take a look at it today and keep in mind we're only going to be running Android for this video, but I did want to give you a first look at the Quartz 64 from Pine64. So as you can see, it's a much larger board than the Raspberry Pi 4, but if you take a look at their spec sheet, they have packed a lot of I.O. into this little thing. I was really impressed reading through the list. So just taking a look up front here, we have our 3.5mm audio jack, a reset, power button, three USB 2.0 ports, and one USB 3.0 port. Moving around to what I'm going to be calling the backside, we have full-size HDMI, gigabit Ethernet, and our power in. Now this only accepts 12 volts, so I was really hoping that it would run on 5. But on their website, they do recommend 12 volts at at least 3 amps, up to 5 amps, and I really think it comes down to the I.O. they've packed into this thing, just to have a little extra power for that extra stuff we want to attach to this board. Because right out of the box, this does have an open-ended X4 PCIe slot, a DSi connector, CSi connector, E-Ink connector, a SATA connector, 20 GPIO pins, and there's a lot more to this. I will leave a link to the website in the description. I would highly recommend reading through the spec list. But one thing I love about these Pine boards is most of them do accept an eMMC module, which is much faster than a micro SD card. Now we can boot this from a micro SD card or eMMC. And right now, over on their wiki page, you can download the Android 11 build. It's a beta build, but I've installed it to a 16GB eMMC module, and that's what we're going to be taking a look at in this video. When it comes to the basic specs of the Quartz 64 Model A for the CPU, we have that Rockchip RK3566. This is a quad-core Cortex-A55 CPU running it up to 2GHz. The GPU is a Mali G52 MP2. They offer two different RAM variants of this board. You can get 4 and 8. I opted for the 8GB model. And uh, just go ahead and take a look down the list here. Some of the more notable stuff here is that PCIe 4X slot. This is an open-ended slot, and personally, I haven't been able to get any GPUs working in here now. Hopefully, in the future, somebody can. We have 20 GPIO pins, a DSi port, an EDP port, e-ink interface, CSI port up to an 8 megapixel camera, an RTC port, and a lithium battery port. So you could run this off of a battery, and I'm not sure if they're offering the correct battery on their website. I'm sure they will once this is officially released to the public. But for now, I'm going to be running this off of a 12 volt 3 amp power supply directly plugged into the wall. The board that I have here is the Model A, but in the future they will be offering a Model B, basically with the same specs minus a lot of this I.O., and in the same form factor as a Raspberry Pi, or some of their other smaller boards. But for now, this was the only one that I could get my hands on with that RK3366, so let's go ahead and see how this thing performs. Alright, so here we are with the latest Android 11 build for this board. Now I do want to mention one more time that it's really early for this software, but I felt that it's performing well enough to take a look at it. Basically, all of the apps you see here were installed by me, and this does not come with Google Play. This was actually really hard to get up and running. Uh, I had to do a lot of hacks to get it to work, but I was able to get it to work in Android 11, and I plan on doing a tutorial soon because this will actually help out a lot of these newer single board computers coming to the market with higher versions of Android and no Google Play. But just note, at the time of making this video, getting Google Play up and running on this was kind of a pain. So first up, Ida64. As you can see, we have those four cores, they're Cortex-A55, and this is only running at 1.8. In the future, hopefully this does get bumped up to 2 GHz, but for this one here, at least in IDA64, it's only telling me we're running at 1.8. For the GPU, you see we have that Mali G52. I am at 1080p on this screen here, and the first thing I really wanted to test was just a little bit of video playback from YouTube. And from here, we'll just go full screen. We're going to go to 1080p, just to show you, 1080p 60. And 1080p streaming on the Quartz 64 actually works really well. In the past, I have tested 4K video playback on this same chip, not in this board, but in Android boxes. And overall, it's really not that bad. Right now, I just can't hit up 4K with the YouTube app I have installed. But when it comes to streaming 1080p on this board here, as you can see, it works very, very well. 
Now let's go ahead and move over to some benchmarks, then we'll test some native Android gaming, and finally, emulation. When it comes to Geekbench 5, these scores are looking pretty low, and I kind of expected this. I have tested the same chip in other Android boxes in the past. Single core, 132, multi, 460. I also tried to run Antutu, and unfortunately we cannot get the GPU test to run, even with the light version of Antutu, but overall score here is 96,336. Keep in mind, this will increase down the road once we can get those GPU benchmarks to factor in. Moving over to some native Android gaming, first up we have Minecraft, 8 chunks, fancy graphics off, it's not the best that I've seen, but it's definitely not the worst. I don't think we're even getting a steady 30 out of it, and I could still go down to 6 chunks, but I left it at 8 to see what it would do. Stardew Valley, very simple game, it's running at full speed. I mean, you're going to get great performance out of these easier to run games when it comes to 3D, at least right now on this version of Android. I personally haven't got amazing performance out of this little thing yet, but the 2D stuff works just fine. And the final Android game I wanted to test was Real Racing 3. This is one I always like to test on lower end ARM chips because it's a very well optimized game. It's been out for a while and the way this is performing right now is basically the same as an S905 chip would perform. Now it's time to check out a little bit of emulation. First up, we have N64. I actually opted to use RetroArch in the Moopin 64 Plus core. I was having issues with the scope storage and the other apps because we're running Android 11 here. But when it comes to N64 performance, I'd say that this is on par with the Amlogic S905 X2 and X3. Next up we have Dreamcast and initially I wanted to use Redream but I kept getting crashes as soon as I started the game up so I had to go back to RetroArch with the Flycast core and even with something a little simpler to run which is Marvel vs. Capcom 2 we can't quite hit that 60 mark. And finally, PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. 1x resolution, no hacks, I am using the Vulcan backend. The easier games actually perform really well, but even with this one here, Soul Calibur, Broken Destiny, if I go up to 2x, performance really takes a hit. I'm talking we're down to around 48 FPS at 2x with this game, but at 1x, it can run it continuously at 60. So overall, when it comes to Android performance right now, I'd say that these chips are on par with the S905X3. I mean, taking a look at PSP performance, Dreamcast, N64, and even native Android gaming, I mean, they're right there, neck and neck, and it really does make sense because what we have with this is an A55 core versus the A53 and the S905, and we actually have the same exact GPU, the Mali G52. So this is definitely not a powerhouse when it comes to Android, but you know, I've yet to get a good build of Linux that was really stable and I could show off for any of these boards that I have with the RK3366. And as soon as somebody releases a decent build, which I'm sure Pine64 will in the next few months or maybe even the next few weeks, I will make a video showing off Linux performance with this chip because that's really what I'm interested in. Right now, we already have a great option for Android, and it's been on the market for a little while. I've mentioned it, the Amlogic S905, and we're getting basically the same exact performance, only that S905 is readily available in super cheap Android TV boxes that you can pick up for as little as $15 on eBay and Amazon. But I will keep an eye out for any new Linux releases for this board, and I will make a video, so definitely stay tuned to the channel if you're interested in seeing that. I will leave links in the description to Pine64's website. Definitely check out the I.O. specs on this board because it's got you covered in all aspects, and if you're interested in a smaller version of this, I'll also leave a link to the Model B version in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on the RK3566, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always... Thanks for watching.